If you are stuck in a building with an infinite loop of time, you have an endless supply of supplies, no cell phone, no internet, eat, drink, shit and stay in this area, how long would you last? This old man has been here for 35 years. The story starts with a pair of brothers. They grew up without a father or mother. They had no skills other than their dexterity. They had to steal for a living. One day, Marco, a policeman, burst in the door. The two of them panicked instantly. Luckily, Carlos was more resourceful. He used the refrigerator to fight with the police to a draw. Then they took the opportunity to leave through the security channel. But it was obvious that Marco would not be so easily defeated. He was about to fail to catch up with the brothers. Marco took out his pistol and shot Carlos in the thigh. But it seems Marco had never fired a gun before. After he fired the gun, the whole person frowned. Just then, suddenly, there was a sound of explosion. The three of them were shaken. What's going on? Where did it explode? They did not have time to think and decided to take Carlos to the hospital first. But then something strange happened. They went to the first floor and found that the door wouldn't open at all. This door does not even have a doorknob. The three of them could only continue to go down. But what's even weirder is that the first floor is actually the ninth floor below. What's going on? Marco told the two brothers to stay where they were. He went down the stairs to check the situation. Marco walked from the ninth floor to the first floor again. But he got to the first floor before he realized the seriousness of the situation. He ran into the two brothers again. The three were instantly confused. They had no idea what this was about. Carlos, who had been shot, asked his brother Juan, Did I get shot in the leg or in the head? Marco climbed the stairs again and again for about ten times. But each time he came back to the same place. Then he took out a set of keys and threw them through a crack in the hallway. The keys fell down from the top in no time. The three men had to accept this reality. They were trapped in this infinite loop of space. Thanks to a vending machine in the hallway, there was plenty of food and drink in the vending machine. They slowly calmed down. However, the next day, Carlos, the thief, was bleeding and not breathing because of the lack of treatment. The vending machine in the hallway was also cyclical. The items in the vending machine were automatically updated every other day. Even the contents of the thieves' school bags were updated. On the other hand, a family is driving on a road. Roberto, the stepfather, offers Sandra a drink in order to get closer to her. However, Sandra has allergic asthma. She is allergic to all fruit-flavored drinks. Now Sandra couldn't breathe. Then Roberto accidentally stepped on Sandra's medicine. What's even more coincidental is that Sandra's brother Daniel didn't bring any spare medicine for her when he went out. The family had to get in the car and go to the hospital. But at that moment, there was a familiar sound of explosion. The highway became the same as the building before. The infinite loop of space appeared again. No matter how they drove, they would always pass the same road sign, the same gas station. There was no one on the long highway. Even if they ran to both sides of the road, they would still return to the original point. Afterwards, her mother, Samila, had broken down and kept hitting her in the mouth, and Sandra had completely lost her breath. What happens to a person trapped in a building with an infinite loop of time for 35 years? Marco, the police officer, lives and supervises every day. He's no longer struggling to find a way out. He eats noodles and drinks every day. Then he just lies down and sleeps. Juan, the former thief, lives a disciplined life here. He climbs the stairs every day listening to music. He does pull-ups and push-ups. Juan made a small bathroom from the mineral water bottles. He refreshes every day. He made a mirror with many nail clippers. Juan cuts his hair when he has nothing else to do. He lives a very sophisticated life. Juan also prays to his backpack every day. Then he pulls out the new supplies in it. He has an endless supply of drinks, endless money to spend. He has an endless supply of bags and threes to listen to. Juan also takes care of Marco, whose limbs have deteriorated, and takes him to the bathroom regularly. And then he eats some noodles. Marco has painted his family on the wall. And imagine how they would live. This may be his only hope to live. And Juan, the thief, sometimes wonders what the mean of his self-discipline is. On the other hand, a family stuck on the road has been on the road for 35 years. Roberto has become a gray-haired old man because of the death of their daughter Sandra. Roberto and Samila live in a constant state of remorse. All they did was drink and drive every day, just driving aimlessly. And Daniel has grown into a young man. He built a tent with clothes from the infinitely refreshed guest station. He listens to music and climbs mountains. He can also cook some cactus to eat. The most important thing is, this place is not as small as the building. The road has a lot of space and a lot of wild vegetables. They had a pretty good life, until the day Tsamiya died. At the very moment of burying Tsamiya, Roberto's head felt dizzy and painful. 
It was as if a memory had suddenly entered his head. Roberto awoke. He remembered everything. It turned out that Roberto had experienced the cyclic space many years ago. He was just a child at that time. Roberto, his teacher and a classmate were playing on the lake. The teacher accidentally fell into the water and dragged the classmate down and drowned. That's when a familiar explosion sounded. They had been circulating on the raft for 35 years. When the teacher died, he remembered and told Roberto he had been on a train for 35 years. He then warned Roberto not to get into a red car. But Roberto got into the car anyway. He spent another 35 years on this road cycle. He ended up with the maps in his life. Roberto warned Daniel that a police car would appear on the highway in a few days. You must not get in the car. Once you get in the car, you're done. Then Roberto pulled out a red book and died. What happened after that was exactly what Roberto said. One day a police car appeared out of nowhere on the highway. The car was empty. Daniel hesitated for a few seconds and then went back to the tent instead of getting into the car. Do you think he was going to stay here and live on? Daniel sorted out some things he wanted to take with him and burned the tent. Daniel walked to the police car with determination. Would it have made sense for him to stay on this road? But the moment Daniel opened the car door, he experienced 35 years of memories instantly lost. Daniel Saturday in the car and followed the instructions in the red book to catch to thieves. That's right. Daniel is the police officer's Marco who was trapped in the hallway with the thief one. His life has only experienced the maps. At this time, he is like Roberto at the end of his life, to think about everything. Marco remembered the circular road. He took out the red book even before he died, and warned the thief one never to enter the elevator. Otherwise, you will never be able to escape the curse of reincarnation. The man was afraid to push the elevator button. He was trapped in a building with an infinite loop of time and lived an aimless life for 35 years with infinitely refreshed supplies from vending machines. When one is presented with the opportunity to change his life, he didn't know how to choose. In the end, he didn't listen to Marco's advice. One pushed the elevator button. The moment the elevator opens, one's memories of 35 years of experience were instantly lost. He stepped into the elevator and read the contents of the red book. Then one changed into the clothes of a waiter as if he had been controlled. He became a hotel attendant. Then a newlywed couple stepped into the elevator and handed him their luggage. After reaching the 14th floor, one suddenly took out a bee from his pants pocket. Then he dropped the luggage uncontrollably on the floor. The husband, who was allergic to bees, was stunned and the medicine in his backpack had been shattered. The familiar explosion sounded again. One came back to his senses. When they looked closer they found they were trapped on the 14th floor of the hotel. They had entered a new 35-year time loop. It is logical that this time, it is the husband who dies. One should be the one who ages, and the wife will enter the next time loop in who knows where. The loop space in the movie is not actually trapped by a real person, but the thoughts of real people. Real people live out there. It's only their thoughts that can't escape. The movie also shows the real trajectory of their lives. Roberto breaks his stepdaughter Sandra's medicine. His wife has a big fight with him and divorces him. Without his family, he spends his days depressed and drinking. He ended up in the bathtub. His mind was stuck on the day of the road. He thinks he caused Sandra's allergies. He broke the allergy medicine which led to the breakup with his wife. Marco, a police officer, had a happier life for the first 35 years. He graduated from school and became a police officer. He fell in love, got married and had a baby. But he also had a dilemma in his heart. He kept blaming himself for not bringing Sandra a spare allergy medicine on the day of the road. He kept climbing mountains and throwing bottles of pills and blaming himself. And then 35 years later, he shot Carlos, a thief, and managed to catch both brothers. But he came home to find his wife cheating on him. In a fit of rage, he shoots the strange man in his bed. Then Marco died in prison for 35 years. Because he shot Carlos, his mood and state of mind changed, so he came home and just shot the man. If only he hadn't shot him, his heart was trapped in that hallway. Marco escaped the trap that had held him captive for 35 years. Because Roberto told Marco on his deathbed that he was responsible for all of this. This should be Roberto's relief to his steps and Marco before he dies. And it is often difficult for young people to face these difficulties head on. The elderly are different. It's hard for them to get out of these situations. These things will follow them all their lives until they die. The director divides life into two main parts. The first half of life is spent in pain and progress. The second half of life is sinking in pain. To warn everyone in the face of difficulties, to remember their original intention, to face everything frankly do not just run away. Otherwise your life will face a series of infinite problems and finally wasted life.